So what we're going to go through today is really uh, information on the whole process, a bit of the background, but then also the application process, um, right through from project development uh, through to uh, obviously um, uh, you know, project, and project completion and financial completion, as well as ongoing reporting. Uh, we're going to look at a couple of the project requirements, so what qualifies, what doesn't qualify, some of the rationale behind all of that. And we're going to look at a couple of case studies, uh, hypothetical case studies, introducing really the real value of environmental upgrade agreements. Um, we're also going to be looking to you to get some feedback about you know, how can we really help you help your customers get these projects over the line. Ultimately, this is a win-win-win solution for the City of Melbourne through their, their targets for greenhouse uh, gas reduction and water efficiency gains, as well as yourselves as getting more projects out there financed and over the line, and also the building owners, because we go through a couple of the detail in here that you know, projects uh, that were previously difficult to get over the line, we've removed a number of those barriers through environmental upgrade agreements. Um, so what we're going to do is run through the session. I'll mainly focus on the first half, um, which is really looking at project development, and then uh, I'll hand over to Bronwyn. Uh, we'll take a few questions in the middle there, have a coffee, stretch your legs, and then we'll hand over to Bronwyn to really go through the, the application process in a little bit more detail so that if you've got projects, you know how to, to walk them through the program. So first of all, a little bit about us. The Sustainable Melbourne Fund is celebrating 10 years of successfully in investing in sustainability projects within uh, uh, Victoria. Uh, we're a wholly owned uh, uh, entity with a uh, board of trustees that manage uh, an investment made by the City of Melbourne in 2002. Our mandate uh, up until uh, last year has to be invest in sustainability projects. Uh, throughout Victoria that deliver value back to uh, the, the, the municipality of Melbourne and uh, Victoria as a whole. Um, we uh, generally make loans up to half a million dollars over six years uh, for sustainability projects including energy efficiency, renewable energy, water efficiency and waste projects. Um, if you want to know more about that investment program outside of the City of Melbourne and indeed within the City of Melbourne, we're also willing to talk to you and want to talk to you about that. But what we're here to talk about mainly today is the second uh, program we offer with the administrators for environmental upgrade finance as part of the 1200 Buildings Program within the municipality of Melbourne. Um, really, this part, and this is what I'm going to focus on today, is, has been de developed to overcome the barriers that we've all really faced in uh, financing and investing in get getting energy efficiency projects over the line in commercial buildings uh, throughout the country and, and indeed globally. The three areas that we all face, and I'm sure you face these on a daily basis, is access to capital or willingness to spend capital that may be put to other productive uses within organisations, uh, the relative costs of capital. Um, you know, I always say to people, it's very hard for a lender to invest in energy efficiency per se because there's very little residual value in a used light bulb. Um, so what this program actually does is now enhances the collateral available to, to lenders and, and we'll go through some of that details. And then also, and probably most significantly, uh, is that it overcomes the split incentive. The split incentive being where an investor, being the building owner, makes an investment and the tenants yield the benefits, being the, the reduced operating costs of their tenancy as well as base building. So they don't get the immediate returns and hopefully they get um, some other commercial benefits in investing in energy efficiency. So environmental upgrade finance, uh, we'll go through the detail that overcomes a lot of that. So graphically, this is essentially uh, how an environmental upgrade agreement works. Um, essentially, this was uh, enabled through a piece of legislation, which I'll go into detail, but it's a three-way agreement between the, I'm oh, sorry about the laser, it's very small, but a financial institution or a lender to this, and down the back of the room we've got uh, product information sheets from the NAB who have partnered with Low Carbon Australia and uh, Eureka Funds Management to create a fund to invest through these kind of programs throughout Australia. Uh, so financial institutions, property owners and the City of Melbourne. An environmental upgrade agreement is essentially a three-way uh, contract between these parties and the contract uh, is available on the 1200 Buildings website. 
uh, but essentially it outlines the process of, for a, an approved project, and project owner, owners come to us, they apply, and we basically say yes or no, that applies uh, or qualifies for the program. And then based upon that, they would have a discussion with lenders out there saying, are you willing to lend to the program through this scheme? So once a project has pre-approval, the financial institution says, yes, we're willing to lend. Uh, money is made available to the property owner for their project. And at the same time, upon the signing of the contract, the City of Melbourne places what's called an environmental upgrade charge on a building, which is basically the same as a council rate. Uh, those rates are equal to a pre-approved amount, which uh, goes through in the contract, but essentially represents the repayments of the advance from the financial institutions. It's collected by the City of Melbourne, like any other normal rates notice, and then passed back to the financial institutions once it has been collected. So what does this really enable? Well, first of all, the headlines. The headlines I hope you've all heard about is basically access to capital. Um, the, the wording that I use is, we, because the uh, collateral has been enhanced from uh, a lender's perspective, you know, we expect it to be cheaper than what is otherwise available for similar projects. And also, the bank has uh, created a project which they, they may be happy to lend out to 10 years on fixed interest um, uh, uh, pricing, which, when you think about the development of your projects, can really add some, some, uh, some value. However, really, this is really the tip of the iceberg. What we're going to go through is some of the detail in which this mechanism really unlocks and, and throws positive challenges out there for you to capture the value of environmental upgrade agreements and energy efficiency per se. But it opens up new cash flows that are otherwise previously unavailable to building owners. Um, by working with tenants to develop comprehensive projects, tenancy lighting upgrades, combined with base building projects, there's a whole new cash flow available to building owners to improve the performance of their building and to provide a service to their tenants, which is de-risking the future pri energy price rises that we, we think we're all going to be facing. And I haven't yet seen anybody draw a curve that points to the, the future price of energy really dropping off a cliff. It all goes the other way. The question is how steep. <clears throat> so EUAs really open potential opportunities. The challenge for you and your businesses and indeed your clients' businesses is to work out how to use those to your benefit. Okay, so what underpins all of this? Uh, in September 2010, the Victorian Parliament passed Australia's first legislation to support the large-scale uh, environmental retrofit of city buildings. The City of Melbourne Act 2001 was uh, amended to enable the City of Melbourne to levy a new form of statutory charge on uh, uh, predominantly non-residential buildings within the City of Melbourne, and that's called an environmental upgrade charge. So the statutory charge is, um, applies to rateable land within the municipality of Melbourne and uh, unlocks a lot of these opportunities. It enables the City of Melbourne to enter into what's called an environmental upgrade agreement, that is the contract between the three parties that we talked about. And upon entering into that agreement, the city would declare an environmental upgrade charge on a building. They would uh, levy that on an annual basis and they collect notionally on a quarterly basis uh, through that. But essentially, the, the, the features of this are that um, it's a statutory charge on the land, so we'll go into some details, but because the statutory charge exists on the land, it can exist across tenants and multiple owners or subsequent owners. Um, multiple environmental upgrade charges can exist on one parcel of land. Um, each of these ones we've pulled out uh, particularly because I think there's a lot of commercial opportunities in there to unlock the value of EUAs. Uh, the third point there, the charge can be passed on to the tenants. Um, working with tenants is the real key to unlocking the true value of environmental upgrade agreements. This is previously unavailable money that's available to building owners on a non-competitive basis, because if you develop a project and you qualify for a loan, there's a pool of funds sitting there, the bank's got $60 million fund ready to be invested right now, you can get this kind of finance. Um, there's currently an amendment between the, uh, uh, before the Victorian Parliament to correct some of the unintended consequences 
of uh, the, the original piece of legislation. But essentially what that piece of legislation means is it is now open to all buildings or predominantly non-residential buildings within the municipality of Melbourne. Just to put that into context, what kind of market are we looking at? 10% of owners, and this is commercial office space, 10% of owners within the city of Melbourne own 42% of net lettable area. Big end of town, big buildings, newer buildings. However, most interestingly, and the area that which we've been focusing on because of this legislative uh, problem has been the 80% uh, the of owners that own 47% of net lettable area. So collectively, this group of owners own more net lettable area, however, it's smaller buildings, more fragmented and dispersed across multiple owners. So the market, upon the passing of this legislation before the Victorian Parliament now, is really open to, to everybody. Um, some of you may have heard uh, that you know, one tenant can ruin this for, for everybody. That's incorrect. You know, the first three projects that we signed, none of the building owners actually elected to speak to their tenants uh, and to try and recover any form of the charge from them. They actually took those on themselves. You know, if you have a multi-tenanted building, you can have one tenant agree, and that's a commercial negotiation between building owner and tenant. You could have three, you could have four, you could have all, or you can have none. This is really a commercial obligation to work with building owners and tenants to unlock opportunities.